Commence! Called Vice Prex Hirken through the arena's amplifiers. The Mark X, voice keyed to him, changed to attack mode. It came directly to bear on Bollocks, rushing at him at top speed. The droid dodged one way, then another, but his efforts were all anticipated by the executioner. It compensated for his every move, rumbling to crush him under its tread. Cancel, rasped Herkin over the amplifiers. The Mark X stopped just short of Bollocks, allowing the old droid to totter awkwardly back from it. Resume, ordered the Vice Prex. The executioner cranked into motion again, selecting another destructive option from its arsenal. Servos hummed, and a weapon arm came up, its end supporting a flame projector. Bollocks saw it and brought his shield up just in time. A gush of fire arced from the nozzle of the flame gun, splashing against the walls of the arena, throwing a burning stream across Bollocks's shield. The Mark X brought the nozzle of its weapon back for another pass at low angle to cut the droid's legs out from under him. Bollocks barely managed to crash clumsily to his knees and ground his shield before flame washed across it, making puddles of fire on the floor around him. The Mark X was rolling again, preparing for a clearer shot when Hirkin canceled that mode too. Bollocks struggled to his feet using the shield for leverage. He could feel his internal mechanisms overheating, his bearings especially. His gyro balance circuitry hadn't been built with this sort of constant punishment in mind. Then the Mark X was coming in again. Bollocks ignored the inevitable, making his sluggish parts respond, moving with some mechanical equivalent of pain, but still functional. Han came out of the elevator at a run. The Espos there, aware that the Vice Prex wished him to see the spectacle, let him pass. He skidded to a stop at the top row of the little amphitheater. Hirkin was seated below with his wife and subordinates, cheering their champion and laughing at the ludicrous bollocks as the executioner raised another weapon arm. This one was provided with a bracket of flechette missile pods. Bollocks saw it too and used a trick, or, as he thought of it, a last variable. Crouching, still holding his shield, he loosed the heavy-duty suspension in his legs and jumped out of the Mark X's crosshairs like some giant red insect. Miniature missiles exploded against the clear arena walls in a cloud, filling the amphitheater with crashing eruptions in spite of the sound suppression system out in the seating area. Hirkin and his people roared their frustration. Han flung himself down the steps to the arena three at a time. Bollocks had landed badly. The strain on his mechanisms was becoming insuperable. The Vice Prex changed his combat automaton's programming once more. The executioner retracted its missile arm. Articulated catch cables extended from ports in its sides like metallic tentacles and two circular saws swung out, their arms locking into position. The saw blades spun, creating a peculiar sound, the molecules of their cutting edges vibrating in a way that would shear through metal as easily as through air. The Mark X moved toward Bollocks, its cables weaving for a terminal embrace. Here can spied Han reaching the arena's edge. Broad? Now watch a true combat automaton at work. He shook with gruesome laughter. All the affected charms of corporate boardrooms stripped from him now. His wife and subordinates followed suit dutifully. Han ignored them and held up the computer. Max, tell him. Blue Max sent burst signals at top volume, concentrated pulses of information. Bollocks turned his red photoreceptors to home in on the probe. He listened for a moment, then returned his attention to the onrushing Mark X. Han, knowing it was crazy, still found himself holding his breath. As the executioner bore down on him, Bollocks made no move to avoid it or raise his shield. The executioner recognized that as only logical. 
The droid had no hope. Questing catch cables spread wide to seize Bollocks. Circular saws swung close. Bollocks hefted his shield and threw it at the Mark X. Cables and cutters changed course. The shield was easily intercepted, caught, and sliced to pieces. But in the moment's reprieve, Bollocks had thrown himself, stiffly, with a huge metallic bong down between the crushing treads of the executioner. The combat automaton ground to a halt, but not in time. Bollocks, lying beneath it, fastened one hand to its undercarriage and locked his servo grip there. The other hand reached in among the components of the Mark X, ripping at its cooling circuitry. The executioner emitted an electronic scream. If it had sat there and pondered for an age, the killing machine would still never have considered the possibility that a general labor droid could have learned how to do the irrational. The Mark X broke into motion, rolling this way and that randomly. It had no way to get at Bollocks, who clung beneath it. No one had ever programmed the executioner to shoot at itself or cut at itself or to crush something it couldn't reach. Bollocks was in the single safe place in the entire arena. The Mark X's internal temperature began rising at once. The killing machine produced enormous amounts of heat. Hirkin was now on his feet screaming, cancel! Cancel, Executioner! I order you to cancel! Techs began running around, bumping into one another. But the Mark X was no longer receiving orders. Its complicated voice-keyed command circuitry had been among the first things to go out of whack. Now it charged aimlessly around the arena, discharging blasters, flame guns, and missile pods at random, threatening to overload the noise suppression system. The arena's transparasteel walls became a window into an inferno. As the executioner roamed, its trunk rotating, its weapons blazing, its malfunctioning guidance system seeking an enemy that it could confront. It was hit by shrapnel from its own missiles. Smoke and fire could be seen pouring from its ventilators. Bollocks hung on to the Mark X's undercarriage with both hands now being dragged back and forth, wondering calmly if his grip would fail. The executioner rebounded from one of the arena's walls. Surviving targeting circuits thought the killing machine had found its enemy at last. It backed up, preparing for another charge, its engine revving. Bollocks decided correctly that it was time to part company. He simply let go. The executioner howled off again, all its remaining attention focused on the unoffending wall. The droid began to drag himself, squeaking laboriously, toward the exit. The executioner crashed head-on into the arena wall, bouncing back with a mighty concussion. Frustrated, it fired all weapons at close range and was engulfed in the backwash of blaster beams, flechette fragments, and acid spray. Then, as Hirkin cried a last, no! The Mark X's internal heat reached critical, compounded by external damage. The Mark X executioner, latest word in combat automata, was ruptured open by a spectacular explosion just as Bollocks, semi-obsolete general labor droid, got his tired chassis out of the arena.